You're watching the Bethel College Football Show. It's jumped by Trey Palmer. He's going to take it for a pick six. Touchdown, Bethel. He catches it in midfield. Braden Francis from 91 yards from Zach Esau. Now here's your host, Dan Page, with football coach Terry Harrison. Welcome back to the Thresher Football Show. Dan Page alongside head coach of the Threshers, Terry Harrison. The Threshers 2-0 and number 10 in the latest NAIA rankings uh, across the country, coach. And you, you got a kind of a big game coming up this week, Kansas Wesleyan, um, 14 or 16, give, and, give or take the poll. But before we get to that, the Threshers fresh off their first home victory of the year. And really just putting up 50 points kind of out of the blue there in a big second half for you guys as you defeat friends on Friday or on Saturday rather last week and get the victory go to 2-0. and uh, Coach it only took three plays for you guys to get going. Yeah yeah no we um, w w just did a great job of kids you know executing the game plan I thought you know we knew our coaches had done a great job this week at, that week at practice you know coach Reed on offense with, along with coach Kelly I and mean, I think those two guys are as as good a coach as as far as motivating players and planning that I've ever been around. And I mean, I just enjoy working on those guys every day. And then obviously on the defensive defensive side of the ball, you know, what, what Coach Kemp, Coach Kurt, um, Denton, Coach Denton and Coach Dale have been able to do are unbelievable. So we're just, you know, just lucky to have great coaches like that. And then when you pair that up with the type of kids we have, um, you know, hardworking kids who, who trust our staff and trust each other, that's kind of how games like that kind of happen, you know, and I think that's what was most obvious to me on the sideline just watching um, was just the level of the, the type of kids, the character of our program, um, just kind of the who, what we're made up of. It, it just felt like it kind of controlled the game the entire time. And so that was really fun to see. But, yeah, we popped one early. And then, you know, the defense <laughs> bended a little bit, gave up that one field goal in the first quarter. And after that, it was just no holding back. And they, and they really dominated the game. So complete game, fun to watch. Got a special team touchdown. That was cool. And so... You know, it was a really a, a cool night for, for our team. And, you know, especially knowing we've been in such dog fights with them, to watch us kind of win that, you know, so handily was, it, it was fun for me to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned that first touchdown, 67 yards as uh, Chance Scurry took it to the house. And uh, Chance always, the last two years, he scored the first touchdown of the game against friends. And then, <laughs> uh, of course, Landon runs one in. And there you kind of lose track after a while because you just started rolling and rolling and rolling. And then finally, it seemed like in the second half, there were some things go going a little bit better with the passing game. Obviously, some things figuring out, you know, same receivers as usual, quarterback and timing and all of that stuff. Um, you know, but Landon gets a 70-yard touchdown pass to Mason Murray, which was huge at the time. Um, you know, he had a lot of guys open in different times throwing the football down the field. But uh, you guys rack up some yardage. Landon throws for two, pass, two completed passes for over 100 yards and then rushes for 150. Uh, you know, just the offense as a whole uh, really figured things out once we got the passing going. Yeah, no, for sure. I think everybody saw, you know, what's funny is, you know, from the side shots, seeing those receivers wide open, which we love, and, you know, People don't understand, like, we're willing to throw for touchdowns. We, we will do that. And Friends gave us those opportunities. You know, when you go back and watch the film, there was some pressure in his face. We felt like our interior offensive line, they played so well all night. Those are, the, those are my guys, right? I coach those guys. Yeah. Um, but we felt like maybe looking back, we could have got some people out of his face. And you couldn't necessarily tell from the bleachers some of that stuff. But when you go back and watch the end zone film, you know, those balls were tougher than it seemed. Even though those guys were wide open, there were defenders flashing in our face and a little bit of pressure. And so we, we've got to clean that up on the offensive line. And, you know, we can go whatever, five and five and five for five touchdowns or something yeah. like that, depending on how people play us. So, you know, I was incredibly proud of that. You know, really cool to see, you know, frustration from Landon early, missing a couple guys. And like you talked about the pressure in the face, and then to see him come back up and just throw a strike for that 70 yard pass to, to Mason, which was an unbelievable route as well and a play call. 
that was really cool and I thought he settled in and really played his style of football and I think that's what people are going to get used to it's just a different vibe and a different style of football which you know you wouldn't think it'd be that different but it just is you know and his what he adds to the plate is, is way different than we've had in the past so that was uh you know that was fun and and uh, like I said, you know, if, if people are going to dare us to throw the football, we're going to throw touchdown passes and make them pay. And so that was uh, that was really cool. And I felt like coming out the second half, you know, we, we it kind of steamrolled on. I think it was punt return touchdown and then the pass or yeah. whatever. Those were pretty close to each other. And that really kind of, you know, you have, a, you have a team that goes in and they're able to kind of talk it half. But we came out and boom, boom, scored, scored. And you could kind of feel, you know, the air come out of the stadium for friends there. And then we were able to, you know, you know, kind of get some guys in to get some experience, which was which was also a bonus, right? I think our starters played about two and a half quarters. So, yeah. you know, get those guys fresh and get these young guys opportunities who certainly deserve it because they practice as much as the rest of us. And yeah. so that was kind of as a program-wide thing, cool to see. Absolutely. Landon ends up getting Offensive Player of the Year, or excuse me, of the Week honors for the conference uh, for those efforts and uh, well-deserved. He really definitely, he's a different player than, um, you know, Bethel fans are used to seeing at quarterback different style, but that's a good thing. I mean, it gives you some differentiation mm -hmm. for defenses to look at. But as a whole, the offense rushes for 543 yards and over 100, 101 to be exact. So a, a good offensive night altogether. And I, everybody, you know, is to, is to thank for that. And it, I said after the game, it was a com comprehensive win, mm -hmm. not just because of how well the offense played, the defense played well as well. But you had guys scoring touchdown that were, you know, number threes on your chart and everything. You had guys like Scott Greider scoring. You had Josh Moran scoring. I mean, everybody was rolling, and it was exciting. So yeah, yeah, no, that that's what's cool. You know, I, we that's how you develop a program. You know, and so you give these guys opportunities. It's kind of what I mentioned just a minute ago, right? All of our guys practice extremely hard every day. Mm -hmm. They they lift really hard three days a week, right? In season, they're going to class. They're doing everything we ask of these guys. I mean, they are. And anyone you see on that sideline is all in, and they're putting all that time and effort in. And so, you know, one of the hardest parts as a coach, you know, is picking people to play. You know, and so when you have an opportunity like that, where you where you handle a game that early it's fun to put those guys in and get opportunities you know we were rotating defensive players every three plays so they were just rotating three plays in three plays out getting game experience and so that's one of the ways you can give back to the program when you become a starter and become a guy that plays more is get these games in situations where those guys get experience because quite honestly that's game changing for the future so not only were we able to win a game against friends um, on this season we were able to get guys experience which is going to pay off for the next two and three and four years and so that's how you know, programs were developed over time. And so that was, uh, man, really cool to see and then fun to see those guys getting out having fun because as fun as practice is for coaches, it's just different to play on the ga on a oh, game yeah. day. And our guys got that opportunity. So, man, it was definitely fun to see those guys play. You know, defense now is at eight, um, eight quarters. They haven't given up a touchdown. Um, you know, and, they, and a lot of guys played and those guys came in and held that shutout against, you know, friends played their guys, you know, they were playing varsity level starting football right. into the fourth quarter. And so what, what, I mean, what a, what a huge compliment for our guys that have, you know, on the sidelines who, who maybe aren't a one yet, there are two or a three for the come in and, and to still, you know, be dominant and win that game was just a huge tip of the hat to those guys and how they stayed mentally in the game and, you know, couldn't be more proud of our, you know, our guys that got in late. Yeah, just to put a little bit of cap on that, forgot DJ Sears was another one that scored a touchdown. Mm -hmm. I, I got some feedback after the game. Some people, some Bethel alums, fans are excited about him. He's just a freshman and yep. getting a touchdown on that, that was big for him. And I, I, I'm also excited for to see what the future holds for that young man. But yep. kind of transitioning over to the defense, um, it was kind of one of those games where you didn't have a high tackle count really for just one specific player, everybody, I mean, you guys were doing what you need to do and getting off the field, open up opportunities for your offense. Obviously, uh, Trey Palmer, which was interesting, is he hadn't had a punt return for touchdown in almost two years, and uh, almost to the day, exactly. <laughs> so it was kind of a moment where it was like he was so due, he was finally there. And, uh, I mean, it, it was a great opportunity. He had to go back to week two of the 2019 season, again, at Avila. Yeah where he, he was a freshman. Yeah. His first ever road game as a thresher and took one back. And then he did he does what he does, you know, once he gets an open field. And it was a heck of a play, uh, good awareness altogether. But uh, he also had interception on defense. So you guys were, you were there, you're coming. Yeah, no, exactly right. You know, it's just so funny. We've seen Trey do that. He scored on some kick returns and punt returns. So it's a, yeah. I mean, anytime he touches the ball, he's just so electric with the ball. And, 
you know, one of the fastest kids in the conference, if not the fastest kid in the conference. So, you know, that's why we have him back there. I thought he did a phenomenal job of fair catching balls and, and, and eat, uh, saving us some field position in traffic. That's a, man, what a, that skill is so underrated in football, yeah. your willingness to go fair catch a ball and not let it hit the ground. Thought he did a great job of that. And then obviously the one he, you know, he catches it, slips a tackle and then goes and score. You know, that whole unit was blocking. And so he made a guy miss late, but no, he's, you know, it's what Trey's been since he got here, this electric player. And then, you know, getting picks on defense like he's always done. And, you know, just couldn't be more proud of those guys. It's such a tough job and probably don't talk about it enough. You know, we talk about, you know, how it is. You just tend to talk about offense because that's just the world we live in. But, you know, those guys, the defensive backs, you know, we talked about Brendan last week and now Trey this week, just couldn't be more proud of those guys. And it, just, it does change your defense when you have guys that can cover like that. And so I think it's going to make us really hard to score against, you know, um, at least consistently, consistently, right? Like it'd be crazy to think we may not give up a touchdown this year, right? It'd be really cool if we don't, but regardless of that, it, it kind of, it feels like, and, and with the defensive backs we have, you know, and how that works with our box, I think there's gonna be hard to court, score against consistently, right? And especially with the matchups that we kind of see. So excited to see those guys continue. They're only getting better um, and definitely proud of Trey for, you know, for people that are new to the program, I mean, that's what Trey's always done, yeah. but it doesn't seem like it's been that long since he scored uh, on a punt return touchdown, but that yeah. was, uh, yeah, phenomenal. Love that. It's always exciting to see, and it's, and it's game changing when that happens. And then just mm -hmm. the defense overall, man, what a, you know, he got a pick, but the pressure was there, and it was by committee, right? There wasn't one yeah. guy that had an insane amount of tackles, but also they got so many stops, they just weren't on the field that much. So, yeah. You know, it's one of those deals. You want a lot of tackles, right? Because it, you know, it's cool to have a lot of tackles. But when you play great team defense, sometimes those stats don't come. And you know, most importantly is the the win, and you know, another another game of you know shutout football as far as not allowing touchdowns. So really cool. Yeah, and I thought it was a great opportunity. You talked about some guys stepping in, um, you know, some of the younger guys that got to play in the secondary as well. Just getting those, you know, they got now. Then now they have two college games under their belt, mm -hmm. setting up one of the biggest games they'll ever play in college. And so, I mean, that's that's a great field experience for them. So, the Threshers end up winning 59 to three was the final score, and the Threshers roll on and. They scored 14 points in the first quarter, 10 in the second, 21 in the third, and 14 in the fourth quarter. Kind of came out of nowhere, but hey, we got to play football when there's time on the clock mm -hmm. kind of a thing. And so the Thresher defense doing what they needed to do as well and holding friends to just 34 yards passing and 121 yards rushing. So it's, it wasn't quite negative 10 yards like the week before <laughs> against McPherson, but still, I mean, Friends, that was their strength running the football against you guys. So the Threshers win that one. Touchdowns from all sorts of guys. I mentioned Landon Barnes too, one from Chance Scurry, and DJ Sears, Scott Greider, and Josh Moran as well. So the Threshers 2-0 and on the season. They're setting up a game against Kansas Wesleyan, and it is huge. The Threshers and the Coyotes ranked coming into week three's football game. It's nationally talked about. And we're going to talk about it here in a second here. As you're watching the Thresher Football Show, we'll be right back. Thresher fans, get ready for the 2021-2022 school year by becoming a member of the Bethel Booster Club. Your membership impacts all athletic programs by paying for experiences last year, such as the Threshbees Award Show, postseason experiences and postseason tickets, the Hall of Fame Banquet, enhanced live streaming equipment, windscreens at Thresher Stadium, improvements at Weedle Field and Ward Tennis Center, and new wall mats inside Thresher Gym. Be a part of Thresher Athletics history in a booster club that has grown 500% in the past five years, over four levels of membership plus the parent level. Join the Bethel College Booster Club today to help student athletes live out life-changing experiences. For more information, go to BethelKS.edu slash booster dash club today. Welcome back to the Thresher Football Show. We talked about the Thresher's game against friends last week. Put it back in the back of your head and think about this week's game as the ranked Kansas Wesleyan Coyotes come to town for a, a big game and just there's always these big games for you guys and year in and year out now. And the same for the last time you played Kansas Wesleyan. There were so many big games, big moments last year where you guys just stepped step up and played good football coach. But uh, I mean, uh, what are your thoughts on them going in? Oh, just that, you know, they have, they have a very talented team, you know, so this is a program that's, you know, been very successful. Um, they have a really good coaching staff and certainly, 
um, you know, several dynamic players that that, we're, that we've been working really hard to kind of have a plan for. You know, we felt like last time that we played them, we did a good job of limiting those guys a little bit. You know, but um, you know, certainly we were able to finish that game, and I think our kids, you know, they're pretty motivated, right, to um, to to get redemption as far as that goes. But uh, you know, just that, um, you know, great team, great coaching staff. You know, both of us have been at the top of the conference for you know a couple of years now, and so you know, knowing it's a big game is uh, you know it's exciting for me, and I can't wait to watch our kids compete. And I can tell you, our, our coaches have uh, you know put an incredible amount of time in um, just to give you know for, to give ourselves an opportunity to you know have a shot to win this thing. And coach, just an observation, you're approaching this, these big games that you coach in. And I mean, for some coaches, they're just, you know, every day leading up to the game, they're nervous about it, they're jittery, um, there's different things. But I've always been impressed with how you handle yourself going into a game like this, you know, size of game and a big game and everything. Where does that come from? You know, I'm very lucky. I think most people know, but I was able to work for uh, Rick Wheeler, who was the head coach at Heights High School. Um, and, and in my estimation, he's the best high school coach in the, in the history of the state of Kansas, right? And, you know, there's been people that's won more state championships than him, but no one in the environment um, at, at, at Heights High School that they could do it, you know, coming out of the City League school, um, which traditionally has not been, you know, successful on the state level. But for him to do that there, um, and just watch how he handled that was very similar to to coming into Bethel and kind of the history of Bethel football. And so being able to work with him, um, see how he operated on the sideline, and he always had a way. You know, I was a you know I was a lot like Coach Kemp back when I was 29, right? A defensive coordinator, pretty uh, pretty passionate and intense on the sidelines. You know, but he wasn't. He was a uh, he was always a steady factor, and you know he, his calmness on the sideline, even in the in the most um, you know critical situations, kind of the team fed off that. And so that was something I learned from him a long time ago, and. Um, I think it's something that, you know, when you're a little younger, you, you struggle with it, um, especially when people care so much, our coaches care so much, our parents care so much. It's so easy to get to overly, make this game overly emotional. But uh, man, just watching him and learning from him and, you know, him being my mentor, quite honestly, was able to, uh, you know, it was something that he worked with me on, you know, as a young coach. And so it's something that's really stuck with me. But, you know, more than that, we tell our kids, you know, all the time that, Look, if you're if you're a great student, you know we call our team a brother. If you're if you're a great friend, even more so um, than you are a great player. If you're a great teammate and and you do everything you need to do right to 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 set yourself up to play your best, you know if you do that and come up short, then it's simply good enough. And that and that not a lot of many not many coaches I guess are willing to say that. Um, but we try to teach our kids what's enough, you know, and it's, and it's not about winning. If if your value is only attached to winning. Um, then you're going to disappoint yourself and you're always going to fall short of that and you're going to fail. And so for us, it, the focus is so far from winning and our purpose is so much greater um, that if our kids do everything they need to do, if they, they prepare the way they've been preparing this week, if our coaches prepare the way they have, you know, you, it's what you don't see the behind the scenes, just the amount of investment our coaches and our families um, and these kids and, the, and our players' families, the, the investment that everyone makes into this program and the commitment we have to it and to making it something that's truly special. Man, if we do that and our kids laid on the line Saturday and we and we come up short, um, that's okay, you know. And so I think that helps with, you know, I think that helps me, you know, with being at, at peace when you go into a Saturday because I know I know I know our kids care. And I know there's no one in the country that cares more than our kids. And so, um, you know, we're at a spot now. We have these physically good players, who are, and we and we can, um, you know, we can be competitive at the national level. Um, you know, but the message doesn't change back from 2018 and 19 when, quite honestly, we weren't physically good enough. We were, you know, we were working on our team culture and we we're working on building this, you know, this base and this foundation that that's kind of what we've now built this program on. You know, it was good enough for those guys to go three and eight. And so, um, so many people tie their 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 value and their self worth into winning, and that's just something that we're simply not willing to do. Our purpose is so much greater than that. And so, you know, my hope is that our families. Um, you know, can be proud of that, you know, and, you know, we all want to win. That's why we practice so much. We all want to win. That's why we lift weights and do all that stuff. But, man, it has to be about more than that um, because in the end, man, it, it, our experience here has got to be, be able to pump out young men and, and, you know, young leaders that, man, that are focused on something outside of that, that it truly is about relationships. And so, you know, that's why it's easy for me to, you know, have this, it is a big game, right? It's going to likely the national player game of the week or something like that. It's going to be in the conversation. So we don't want to deny that, but we've worked so hard, you know, to get, to have this opportunity, right? Just to be in a big game. And so we're just excited for that. And, you know, we've worked really hard to just be in this situation. And, you know, we, we want to be grateful. We want to be this program built on gratefulness 
that, that we have the opportunity to play in a national game of the week and to be ranked number 10 against a number 16 because there's so many programs out there that, you know, they just don't get to play in these big games. And it's why our kids come here. It's why it's easy for me to be at ease about it because, you know, our kids are, our kids have embraced that and they want that opportunity. And we've, we've been able to be in a lot of big games. And so, man, just proud of our kids, proud of our program. And, you know, that's a little, that's learned from Coach Wheeler and my mentor. And, you know, as a daily reminder back when I was a, you know, younger coach, I, I think I'm still a pretty young coach, but, uh, <laughs> you know, just a reminder of that. And, and then just seeing our guys every day, I'm just, I mean, it, it sounds cheesy and it might sound corny, but I mean, even at practice every day, our kids amaze me. The, the level of effort they put out at practice, um, knowing the academic schedule that they balance, you know, knowing the, you know, everybody has a story, right? And knowing some of the family stories and the, and the challenges they face to be here, to have built something that's competitive on a national level where no one else has been able to do that. Um, man, those guys, there's, there's nothing our kids can do to disappoint me. And that's just, um, you know, it's just the way it is. And I think it makes it easier to, you know, go into a Saturday and to compete and, you know, watch the good and the bad happen because, it's never because of a lack of effort. It's never because of a lack of um, investment. And, and that goes for both coaches and kids. And I think that's why, you know, we're able to put the product out we are because it's just it's a special group of people from coaches um, to support staff to players. And so, um, you know, that's what makes it easy for me to, um, you know, be as positive about things and, you know, lack of stress, I guess you want to say, because I know our kids are going to bring it on Saturday and they're going to, um, they're going to play their best and, you know, they're going to prepare to give ourselves a shot that we can all be proud of. And so my hope is for fans and families that, you know, that we can be a program that is built on gratefulness and can, can understand that, man, our kids are, they're going to give it their best shot. And, um, man, if, if, it's, if we come up short, we're going to be on the, we're going to be putting each other up after the game because it certainly won't be a, a lack of desire, a lack of effort. You know, it's going to, you know, maybe we come up short for different reasons, but if, if we come out on top, the message doesn't change. And, um, you know, unfortunately we'll be able to win a bunch of games, but man, it's about so much more than that for us, which is why it makes it, um, you know, exciting, you know, stress-free for me. It's more exciting than it is, you know, anxiety. So. Yeah. Well, Coach, just to put a cap on that, you know, I came across Twitter this week and a video from a couple of years ago, you guys singing Father Abraham after a road win at Avila. And I just remembered, you, you know, you talked about the gratitude and everything, the value systems, and those guys were just feeling so great just to win that football game. They, they had no idea what was in store for the future of that of the program at the time. And, um, it, you know, it just kind of made me, you know, you sometimes wonder, okay, is it still there? I mean, kind of a thing. And there's some guys that were there and played in that game. And it really just, I mean, you know that they know and appreciate what it is to be where this program's at. So, and just, and then switching gears, for this week's game, Coach, uh, Kansas Wesleyan, obviously pretty talented. I mean, you, you look, you've seen a lot of film, offense, defense. They, you know, they maybe lose uh, just a few players that stood out in that football game last spring against you guys. Isaiah Randall, a quarterback, very good. Um, you know, Stevie Williams, talented receiver. They are, they're deep at receiver and skill positions, but they always have size and they always have talent. Right, yeah, no, they're – you know, incredibly talented team. They're they're really fun to watch, right? If you're not preparing for them anyway, right? But just to watch them play, they're you know they have a receiver in Stevie Williams. I think he's number zero this year. He's been number one in the past, but you know that guy has made unbelievable catches. All I mean, so many times, and so you know he's going to pose a challenge for us. Um, their their quarterback is a good player. He played last year. He's going to throw it up and give those guys a shot. But Stevie's long, you know, so you know he we're going to mix up coverages on him hopefully, and you know he's one of those guys, you know that you can play everything right and he can still somehow make those unbelievable catches. And so, you know, we're going to have to, last year we were able to limit him a little bit. So hopefully we can do that again. They have a little receiver in number two. His name is Drayvon Macon, I believe. I mean, it looks like he should play in beef lane slot for us, to be honest with you, his body type and the way he plays. But um, they do some jet sweeps to him. They kind of target him, throw him some perimeter stuff. But he's, they put him in the backfield. He's another just electric uh, player. Reminds me a lot of our guys. And so, man, those guys just pose challenges. So on top of that, with a quarterback who's a good player and an offensive line who's a veteran group I think their entire offensive line is back I mean what a challenge for our defense and um, quite honestly I'm, I'm excited to see because I think our defense has um, you know quietly been the strength of our team right and so um, just just can't wait to see that matchup but certainly know they have our respect they do a great job um, coaching and getting those guys in positions to make plays and so we're gonna have to do a good job of that and then defensively um, a lot of returning D linemen 
Uh, probably the best part of the team is their linebacking core. Um, number six, his name is Zaire Velasquez, I believe. Uh, man, good player, Very plays a lot very vertically, really upfield, and crosses the line of scrimmage a lot. He did a good job against us last year. We're going to have to make sure we kind of manage that. Um, our middle linebacker is number 22. Um, good player, um, did a good job against us last year. So they certainly pose some challenges. Um, and they have our respect and um, you know for us these are the games we want to be in right we want to be in right. games that have good players with good coaching um, you know to be quite honest you know 59 to 3 is not fun I mean while we're proud of that and we're excited where we're at you know it's so much more fun to be in these games that are that matter with a great atmosphere against quality opponents like 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 uh, Kansas Wesleyan and the Southwesterns and the Avalas of the world and so man what a what a great opportunity for our guys to play a ranked team um, at home early in the season. It's probably a, as early a big matchup as we've had, you know, mm -hmm. if I'm thinking back right. right. Um, so we're going to, man, we're cut out for us, but know that our kids, you know, knowing what our kids have been through, you know, and what we've, what we've, We've we've set ourselves up to, to play our best in this in this situation. So I know our kids will bring it. I know our kids will be excited to play. And um, you know they certainly have some great players that, that we're certainly aware of. And we're going to have to have some special plans to make sure we limit them, especially on offense. Yeah, and Randall is definitely one of those guys that when he's in the pocket, he can just take off and scoot as well, try to get first downs. Did that a little bit last year to test you guys, but I know I'm sure you're prepared for it this go around. So and then Velasquez on defense, yes, he was just an animal last year and. Uh, I, I, you know, he was in every play, it seemed like. So that's, that's going to definitely, again, cap it off. That's going to be a test for you guys. As Kansas Wesleyan comes to town, it's going to be streamed on the KCAC network. I'll be up in the press box uh, broadcasting that live to you from Thresher Stadium. Six o'clock kick. We'll start pregame a little bit earlier uh, with the new streaming service we have. We can do that a little bit more. And uh, I will take up as much time as possible because, you know, I just look, you know, investing into you guys is something I truly enjoy. Just trying to make sure we get all the information out there that folks need to know ahead of game time. So uh, before I forget, Coach, you got a JV game coming up after playing Kansas Wesleyan on Saturday. Yeah, no, what a great opportunity, right? We've been fortunate. We've been the only team in the conference that has played JV games in the last several years, and we've had to go to Benedictine to do that. Um, but now um, Kansas Wesleyan committed to playing us on the on a JV game on Monday. That's September the 20th at 7 p.m. That's going to be here at home. Um, we're going to play Sterling October the 4th at home, 7 p.m., um, and then we're going to go to Bethany October the 11th, and that's going to be there, 7 p.m. kickoffs. Um, we had to go with a late kickoff to, you know, our soccer team's practice on, on the turf, and so sure. that's what the deal with the late kickoff is. But, man, what a great opportunity for these young men that, um, we, you know, we list names a lot. We've had players of the year. We've had player of the week. We've had All-Americans. We've had all of those things. Um, but our young men that are waiting in the, in the wings, right, that are waiting for their opportunity, they put in just as much work. They're, they're lifting and they're practicing every day. And those guys, man, they do such a great job. You know, and so outside of if you get up by 50 points putting guys in, you know, you, you want to get these guys opportunities. Yeah. And so that's why we've committed to this JV schedule. So they're going to get to play college football and get legitimate college football reps, you know, starting on Monday. And so really excited about that. Um, you know, it's a, such a great opportunity. You know, we asked these guys, you know, probably the, one of the coolest parts, um, and also these games will be live streamed, by the way. So if you can't make it, they're gonna be live streamed for free. Um, if you can make it, you'll get in for free. Um, but beyond that, one of the cool parts is going to be, we asked so much of these young men that maybe not be playing on a Saturday yet, and if you've heard our sidelines, you can just hear them going nuts and creating this big time environment. Um, now, so they do that for the people that are playing on Saturdays. Well, what we're going to do is when we host these JV games, you know, with servant leadership being such a big part of our program, we're going to flip that. And so now our guys that are playing the most on Saturdays, they're going to serve. So our guys that you've heard names of, they're players of the weeks and players of the year and all conference level guys. That are, that are having that opportunity right now, we are gonna be the ball boys, we are gonna be the chain crew, we're gonna be the concession workers, we're gonna be you know, doing all that stuff, but what a, it's just a great opportunity for those guys to create a big time environment and to give back to the guys that do that, that, that do that for, for them every Saturday. So, you know, it's really a great deal for our program. We get game experience for our younger guys that may not have had an opportunity yet. Um, and then on the other side, our guys that, that have been here and a little more established, they get to truly show what server leadership is about, and and they're gonna they're gonna be announcers, and they're gonna be running the video board and scoreboard. So, 
you know, I think it's really cool that that is an opportunity for our guys to serve because that's such a big part of our program. And so excited about that. Who knows? It might be, could be, it's probably going to be like Avery Hawkins and Dominique Copeland up in the, on the press box, uh, you know, with a, with a microphone. So, you know, <laughs> they volunteered, right? And so I think that's, I don't know if they did that or so they could get some concessions out of the deal, but it is really cool that they're going to get to do that. And, you know, I'm going to be there. Our younger coaches are going to get an opportunity to, you know, get some, get some game coaching experience where maybe they're play calling more or helping a just and you know some things that maybe myself and coach Kemp, coach uh you know coach reed coach kelly do more of these other guys are gonna get opportunities i think that's you know it's just developing the program and that's what it is and it's kind of stacking up future wins for us and so man couldn't be more excited about that but we have sent those schedules out but again that is september 20th october 4th at home at 7 p.m and then again on october the 11th that's going to be in Lindsburg, kansas at bethany college so man couldn't be more excited about that couldn't be more proud of our players right now um, and for our people, I know a lot of guys and families listen to this on the road up, just, man, so proud of our team. We're, we're so thankful that, you know, we've come so far from simply wanting to be relevant in the conference to, you know, giving ourselves an opportunity to be in these big games, which are, you know, national game of the week type of games, whatever you want to call it. But, man, just couldn't be more impressed with, with our fans on Saturday and having everybody back down on the field with us again. And I can tell you, Man, what our kids, what our sons and, and these players are doing um, is truly special. I mean, we're not talking about just winning and being 2-0. and it's, it's how they interact daily, um, how they work, their, this, the, the amount of toughness they have. Um, it, it just really speaks to the families we have. I think it speaks to our coaching staff. And um, I, mean, I can tell you, for me, that's enough. Right? It's not just about winning national championships or a national game of the week. While certainly that, those are goals and we want to do that, um, man, our kids – our kids do a great job and, and it really is a special place. And we're so thankful for everybody that's, you know, listening to this either at home, getting ready to watch the live stream, or if you're in a car headed down, just know, you know, I'm the, I'm the luckiest coach in the world. I really believe that for the kids we work with every day. And, you know, just couldn't be more thankful for the type of kids we have, which come from obviously the type of families we have. So can't wait to lay it on the line on a, hopefully the national game of the week. Yeah. So it's the Threshers and the Coyotes, six o'clock kick from Thresher Stadium. It should be a great environment. And you can watch it on the KCAC Network. That's going to do it for our show this week. He's Coach Harrison. I'm Dan Page. We'll see you on Saturday and roll on.